um, I'm going to talk about uh, application of renewable energy in agriculture. <clears throat> so if you're talking about renewable energy sources, uh, biomass, solar, wind, geothermal, tidal waves, ocean, and finally, hydrotherm, hydropower. And uh, among them uh, for agriculture re uh, related will be uh, solar and biomass. So these two will be more closer to uh, agriculture applications. And if we're talking about biomass, so biomass is nothing but any organic matter that may be derived from plant materials. Uh, if you're talking about agriculture, uh, we are developing a lot of biomasses uh, in terms of agriculture residues. So it may be start from uh, straw and stalks and uh, um, grounded cell like that, okay? And the, those things will be commonly used as a, a direct fuel. And how you can effectively convert those them into uh, fuel or energy form. So there will be uh, three way you can go for uh, energy conversions. One will be thermochemical, another will be biochemical, third one will be uh, chemical method. And all the three will be focusing for uh, generating our uh, fuels, right? So if you go for combustion, it will be directly we can get the heat. And uh, there is no fuel will be developed, only heat will be getting it and we can use it for uh, our requirement. And next one will be, uh, we can get it uh, gases form, uh, gas may be, you can get it or it may be, uh, fuels may be in the form of uh, solid, uh, solid and also liquid form. That is also available. And uh, the, for that purpose, we are going to use uh, several uh, uh, conversion methods, right? So first one be thermochemical conversion and biochemical conversion. So thermochemical conversion means uh, in which we are heat will be employed to degrade the uh, biomass material into uh, fuel or uh, energy, right? So this is one of the uh, uh, um, in a biomass gas stove, uh, it'll be working on updraft gasification, right? This principle will be updraft gasification. Uh, that means it'll be capable of producing first initially, it'll be operated as a combustor. Uh, heat will be generated. Second will be, it'll be converted into few, uh, it'll be generating producer gas and the producer gas will be combusted in the system itself. So that's why they call that, they will call it as a updraft gasification. So if this is a biomass gas stove in which we can uh, load the uh, agriculture residues, and depending upon the agriculture residues, it will be occupying its space, right? So they have different sizes and shapes. So you have to make it as a smaller pieces and put it in the system. And this will be operated for three hours. Continuously, you can produce heat for three hours. So wherever the heat requirement in the farm, uh, you can use this kind of machine, uh, a stove for heat production. And another will be pyrolysis. So previous case, heat will be generated. Second case will be pyrolysis. So paralysis means here also the thermal degradation of biomass will be takes place without oxygen supply. That is uh, anaerobic conditions in which we can get the two kinds of product. One will be a solid product, another will be a gaseous product. Sorry, solid product and liquid product. So the liquid product will be referred as a bio oil. That bio oil can be used as a fuel in um, different um, furnaces. Whereas uh, solid product will be referred as a uh, charcoal. We are can getting the charcoal or they will cut as a biochar. So two form will be, we are getting it. So the basic difference between the biochar and charcoal means, so the charcoal means nothing but the curry keta, curry, right? So the charcoal, if you are used as a fuel, okay? If you are the purpose will be used as a fuel means that they will cut as a charcoal. Whereas you are, uh, the charcoal make it a powder and apply in the field will be referred as a biochar. So both the things will be produced by means of pyrolysis process. Right. So here is the example for small unit, how we can uh, produce the uh, biochar from agro residues. So we can see that there will be two. Um, so we can see that uh, two um, zones will be there, right? So the first will be combustion zone and another one will be our uh, uh, the material to be biochar. Okay. Biochar will be keep it in this uh, zone. That is called as a pyrolysis zone. And uh, here will be heat will be produced. That heat will be transferred the heat. Uh, to the your pyrolysis unit. So that means, so indirect heating, there is no air will be entered, only the heat will be transferred from the your combustion zone to your pyrolysis zone where the biomass will be get heated and whatever the volatile matters to be released during the process may be escaped through the your chimney, right? So initially it will get the white color smoke, uh, the uh, smoke will be comes out and once will be smoke will be stopped, that will be indication for the process will be over. You can remove the uh, your chimney you can remove the chimney and you can cover with the lid. So that is the indication for the process will be over. 
so maximum time will be uh, 60 minutes that is one hour will be taking place the char production efficiency will be 30 percent you can achieve one kg means 700 grams you can get the char and this is another uh, application of your biomass into fuel so the previous case first initial case we are see that uh, how we can um, convert your biomass into uh, heat energy heat energy that is a combustor a uh, biomass cast out second one be using that how you can get the your uh, char from that biomass third one will be how you can convert your biomass into gaseous fuel so for that purpose the people are using a gasifier this will be called as a gasifier so this gasifier will be used to convert your gases our solid biomass into gases by means of gasification process that means the limited amount of air will be supplied during the process to thermal degrading the your organic matter so in which we can co and nitrogen and your uh, methane and hydrogen will be in combination will be produced that will be called as a producer gas so the producer gas will be sent to the cleaning unit where you can remove the tar content in the systems tar content means the if you are talking about any biomass material it has a more moisture so definitely will be release the tar amount that will may be causing problem in the engines to avoid that one they have the uh, tar cleaning systems will be employed so once will be cleaning will be over then again it will be sent to the your engine so the engine may be coupled with the generator or we can coupled with the water pump okay pumping systems so we can here will be example for water pumping is example so that is also possible wherever uh, remote area there is no power will be available you can use the uh, this kind of setup for the energy generation so this is our unit so this is a unit uh, that will be gasifier from the gasifier you are um, gas will be supplied to the cleaning unit after cleaning it will reach the your engines so next will be biomechanical biochemical method of energy conversion of biomass so previously we see that see that thermochemical i now we are going to see about the biochemical so what do you mean by biochemical means the biochemical is nothing but your uh, uh, de decomposition of our organic matter takes place with the help of uh, microorganisms right so it may be aerobic process or it may be anaerobic process depending upon the uh, final output is required so if you are go for aerobic means you can get the composting and if you go for anaerobic means you can get the biogas so here will be you can see that how the people are disposing the waste it, it might be related to agriculture sector right so it is here will be the example of animal waste how it will be dumped in the atmosphere right so the environment will be it will be get polluted both the soil and uh, the health in the nearby of the public will be health also get affected so this is the way that daily we are disposing our waste to the your opening yard uh, this is the household waste so here will be the people will be punjab and haryana we can see that every year we can see that a lot of agro residues will be burning because of the short rotations for the next crop rising and that may be uh, why they are burning means the reason may be a huge amount will be produced and they will get the lower price for the your uh, agro residues concern so that's why they are burning it and that may be causing air pollution nearby uh, states including delhi also so how to overcome these issues so we can go for biomethanization process where we can microorganism will be involved to decompose this kind of waste into gases fuel that becomes a biogas so here is the here will be this slide will be shows that um, ministry will be approved uh, different type of biogas plants right so these are the popular two models among them uh, among them uh, the, these are the two popular model uh, in india one will be kvc kvc means kadi village industry commission model biogas plant another will be dinabandu model biogas plant these two will be more popular right now in india other models will be outdated right now uh, this is example of uh, our kvc model biogas plant so here also you can see that night soil based also uh, biogas plants also are available and reason what is the reason developments so here will be what are the feed stock we are feeding to the system that may be go for pre treatment where you can remove the unwanted materials for example soil any stones or impurities present there or biomass may be removed and that may be sent to the your biogas plant in which your gas will be generated after that the uh, your uh, digested slurry will be comes out from the biogas plant it may be contain more amount of mass, uh, water so water liquid may be separated you can both the things will be sent to the agriculture field for applications okay so it may be for solid may be utilized as a manure and white uh, liquid also utilized as a manure 
directly you can appear in the field. Whereas where what are the biogas will be obtained from this biogas plant that may be uh, upgraded right now. Uh, that means uh, generally biogas will be contain um, uh, 60% uh, methane content uh, that may be uh, uh, low, low calorific value. So in order to increase the calorific value, so the CO2 content in the biogas must be removed. So around 40% CO2 will be present in the biogas. So that may be the percentage of the CO2 will be in the biogas must be removed. So automatically the calorific value of the fuel will be increased because of the methane is a more combustible fuel present in the biogas. So for example, where uh, methane content in the final product will be goes uh, beyond that 90%, that will be referred as a biomethane or they will call it as a compressed biogas, okay, CBG. So compressed biogas. So that may be more popular right now. That so that we replace the CNG vehicle uh, fuel in the uh, in the vehicles, right? So it may be uh, costing around 65 rupees uh, per kg of CN CPG compressor biogas. So that's the way the people are doing it. So one will be directly used as a fuel. Otherwise, you can use it for uh, power generation. If you're coupled with the generator, you can generate the power, and that may be supplied to the grid, or you can go for own use. That is off grid systems. And whether any subsidies available for the, in this case, construction of biogas plant, yeah, it will be available uh, for one uh, meter cube. They will people, government will be giving 7,500 subsidy. And in Tamil Nadu is concerned, they, they are not promoting one meter cube. They are promoting only more than one, one meter cube. That is a two to six meter cube uh, in which we can get the 12,000 rupees as a subsidy. And if you go for six to 10 person, 10 meter cube, you can get the 16,000 rupees as a subsidy. Whereas if your, your biogas plant will be linked with the toilet, they will additionally they will give 1,600 apart from the subsidy. So these schemes are available right now. And chemical conversion uh, of our biomass. So here will be uh, example will be this uh, biodiesel plant uh, in which the what is a biodiesel means will be biodiesel is nothing but it's a derived from vegetable oil by using trans esterification process, right? Uh, in which what will happen, they are separating glycerol content in the uh, vegetable oil. And it may be after that glycerol removal from the vegetable oil, it will become a lighter in uh, density and lighter in vis viscosity. That means uh, closer to diesel fuel viscosity. Uh, you can directly apply in the diesel fuels. So why they will cut as a bio? Bio is uh, indicating that it will be derived from biological sources. What is the uh, purpose of indicating diesel means it will be alternative to diesel fuels. So that means, so the biodiesel will be should be used in the only uh, diesel fuel, so not in petrol, right? So this is a case. So this will be produced by means of a trans esterification process. So here will be the reactor uh, that will be capable of producing 250 liters per day. So it will have the batch uh, batch type. So 50 liters process will be takes place uh, for uh, two hours. So one day you can capable of producing 250 liters uh, bio biodiesel will be generated in this case. Uh, for this purpose, they have the chemical mixing tank in which sodium methoxy solution will be prepared and sent to the reactor inside the system. And oil will be pumped to the reactor and uh, stirring will be taking place at particular temperature. After that, the reactants will be sent to the glycerol settling tank. Here will be, you can see the two tank will be there. There will be glycerol settling tank. Due to the density difference, the glycerol will be settled at the bottom. So here will be the gate wall will be there. You can open it. So automatically the glycerol will be removed like this. So the glycerol will be removed. After that, the biodiesel will be sent to the water washing because any residue present in the uh, biodiesel that may be uh, that may be removed before used in the engine, right? So next will be uh, uh, solar energy. So so far we uh, seen about how biomass will be effectively utilized in the agriculture. And uh, next we are going to say about the solar energy. Solar energy. If you talk about solar energy, you can see that. Uh, Two kinds of energy we can see it one will be thermal and one will be heat. Sorry, yeah, light energy. So you can get it uh, thermal and light. So those things will be used uh, for generating the electricity or heat. Okay. So if we're talking about uh, thermal energy path, if you have the light, uh, sorry, if your uh, sunlight will be available, in which thermal energy are available, that may be you can extract, that may be used for your uh, own purpose. So based on the temperature, we have the low temperature, medium temperature, high temperature equipments on will be low temperature will be varying from 60 to 80 degree where you can focusing on water, uh, hot water generation. Whereas if we're talking about 60 to sorry, 80 to 140 degree centigrade heat uh, available that may be used for drying purpose. Whereas uh, the heat then generation will be uh, using system greater than 140 degree centigrade that will be go for 
high temperature that will be go for cooking purpose or electricity generation by means of steam production right so the solar dryer that may be drying for your agriculture or agriculture and horticulture crop residues and space heating system so one water heating system and greenhouse heating system so the greenhouse heating system in which we can um, i uh, heat thermal uh, sorry what you can say that um, temperature requirement of our crop will be low means the heat energy available in the sunlight may be used for um, plant growth so if you're talking about dryers uh, there will be two type one will be natural convection dryer next one will be forced convection dryer uh, what is the basic difference between these two will be uh, first one will be natural convection means uh, here will be the collector will be there it will be called as a solar collector and it will be drying pin this will be called as a drying pin so this will be called as a solar uh, uh, collector this will be called as a our uh, drying pin right so here will be the this uh, solar collector will be exposed to the sunlight it will be exposed to the sunlight so what are the sunlight will be falling on the surface of your uh, solar collector it get heated because the surface will be coated with the black color so why the people are coating with black color means it will be observing more heat it will be uh, losses will be very very less right so whenever the air will be coming here in the atmosphere it tend to move inside right and it will be tend uh, it will tend to move inside it will be reach the your drying pin so this action will be takes place by naturally that means a convection convection the transfer will be takes place by the convection uh, that means the heated and always the heated air will be tend to move up okay so the heated air has a lesser density it will always tend to move up so whenever we have the our sunlight will be falling on the surface so the air will be entered in the system it will be become a lighter in density that means it it absorb the heat from the our plate it will get the heated and that heated air will be entered in the drying pin this is the way it will be moving it so all the, the movement of air will be takes place by naturally okay so they have to say they call it a natural convection uh, dryer and uh, another will be forced convection in which uh, we are using additional force to supply the air to the systems right that means the gear will be the people are employing fan or blower at the entry point of air uh, they have they using fan or blower so the purpose will be it'll be get the air from atmosphere and uniformly supply that uh, air inside the systems through the air collectors through the your uh, what you can say drying pin right so external energy will be uh, used for operating where the movement of air will be takes place in the case of forced convection air uh, solar dryers and another one will be you can see that the direct heating and indirect heating in the sideways you can see that direct and indirect indirect heating so direct heating means your uh, drying material will be directly exposed to the uh, sunlight directly you can see the the metal uh, light will be falling on the surface of your drying material so that will be direct heating indirect heating means there is no material be our drying material will be uh, exposed to the sunlight that means that it will be kept in drying pin right so for example if any medicinal plants if you are keep it in the exposed to the sunlight the color may be changes right so that kind of things will be avoided we go for indirect heating so this is a one of the popular model uh, right now uh, solar tunnel dryer solar tunnel dryer it looks like a tunnel right it will looks like a tunnel in the pv polyethylene sheet will be treated sheet will be 200 micron will be used employed here uh, with the support of frames right it will be support of the frames so normally it will be 18 meter length it will be length will be 18 meter height will be 3.75 meters so the height will be 3.75 meters so in this case what will happen uh, the the water whenever the sunlight will be falling on the surface will be penetrated inside and it'll be with the inside the air will be get heated and the bottom of your uh, floor also it'll be black color coated uh, sometimes they may be using kadapakal right so why they are using that kind of a stroke uh, um, the stone means they will be absorb the heat it will release the heat slowly so here will be example of your drying of vadakam uh, in this case so that the drying will be takes place uh, uh, 5 to 8 hours so here will be another example of a drying system so, so if we talking about solar dryer uh, it will be operated only day times so what about night time so now we can operate the solar dryer on night time so what supposed to do if are possible for uh, operating night time then uh, the, yeah it is possible by using this kind of arrangement so this will called as a biomass uh, uh, air heating systems this will be called as a biomass air heating systems where we can put the your uh, biomass material inside right so uh, agro residues make a you can place it inside and burning it so once it will be burning it the blue gas will be comes out it will heat higher temperatures 
so the flue gas will be sent to the heat exchanger and where it will be used uh, the blue gas will be heating the atmosphere air and the heated air in the heat exchanger will be sent to the your, uh, your what you can say that is your um, solar dryer right so that's why it will be called as a solar biomass hybrid dryer so that means uh, the continuous drying of your uh, things will be takes place continuous biomass drying will be sir continuous product drying will be takes place so day and night you can operate it so this is the example of your um, so this is a case so the flue gas will be uh, goes uh, through the chimney and only the heated air will be entered in the systems not the flue gas will be entered in the system if they send the flue gas in the system means the quality and colors will be varying it to avoid that they, they only the heated air only hot air only supply to the systems and this is a case you can see that uh, the continuous drying of our um, turmeric how it will be uh, dried so the quality also improved as compared with the open air drying open air drying so sun drying means will be the temperature will be you not know, may not be uniform so it may be with respect to the time so air will be you can record it at the noon time and lesser in the morning and evening and also periodic uh, uh, stirring also required so here will be you can see that it will be continuous drying will be takes place by means of solar uh, biomass hybrid dryer tunnel dryer so here will be you can see that uh, there, there will be temperature control also you can uh, keep it in the systems so whenever for example i want to dry the material uh, that uh, turmeric in 60 degree uh, your system will be producing solar will be producing 65 degree inside the system means automatically the sensor will give the signal to operate that fan right so it will be excess heat will be removed and sent to the uh, chimney to maintain the temperature inside right so once it will be reach the 60 degree automatically the your uh, the blower will be stopped and the temperature will maintain the, uh, maintained in the systems right and and also you may be wondering that you can see that the material will be kept in trays right so why the people are kept in trays means uh, floor if you are if you are uh, spread it in floor it will be lesser uh, capacity in order to increase the drying capacity of the dryer we can uh, construct this kind of trays and you can give them keep the materials in the trays so same, that means uh, indirectly we are increasing the capacity of the dry uh, sorry your dryer systems so this may be used for uh, coconut uh, coconut also copra also copra drying also you can use it 500 copra you can dry it in, the, in this kind of systems so this is another example for uh, indirect uh, indirect why they also indirect means the material won't be exposed to the sunlight here will be uh, solar biomass dryer so here will be your heat will be absorbed from the sunlight that the heat heat will be air will be sent to the systems whenever the heat will be not required, not available in the time you can operate the uh, biomass uh, biomass uh, based uh, hot air generation systems so this will be well suitable for uh, hilly areas where we have the fluctuation in the sunlight so this is another type of uh, dryer compound parabolic uh, solar dryer in which we can see that this will be called as a solar uh, collectors right this will be drying yard drying pin so here will be you can see that river uh, um, solar collector we can see that the surface will be looks like a black color coated so we can look at this so the air will be entered in the system through this arrangement so you can see the tap or tap like arrangement through entered and that may be sucked and sent to the your uh, drying pin so this is the kind of setup will be here and you can um, keep the material inside the trays for drying it so this is the arrangement uh, where uh, the air will be entered into the systems so whenever the air will be entered in the entry point and reaches this outlet point will be become get heated so in this case maximum temperature will be you can attain 68 degree and you can the cost will be 2.5 lakhs and uh, you can use it for any uh, different type of any kind of uh, agro residues sorry uh, agro products you can dry it different temperature controls also available so this is a way you can uh, keep the material inside and take it out from the drying pin and so next will be your how you can convert your sunlight into energy so this is the concept so here will be called as a, they will call as solar cells so the solar cell be used to convert your light energy uh, get it from the sunlight right so the sunlight will be converted into electricity by means of solar cell using photovoltaic effect so here will be some basics so single point will be called as a, this individual will be called as a 
so the individual will be called as a cells right so this will be called as a cell right so each cell will be capable of producing 0.5 volt so it will be capable of producing 0.5 volt right and uh, our recommend will be voltage will be higher means what supposed to you can connect this series several number of solar cells in series or parallel like this it may be connected series or parallel depending upon the requirement uh, based upon the voltage requirement or uh, current requirement and this will be once will be the cells will be several cells will be connected series or parallel they will be formed like this this will be called as a module okay so even module also for capable of producing 40 watts 50 watts like that and that power is not sufficient then you can connect several modules in the system that will called as a 1 2 3 4 5 so 10 module will be connected in the system will be called as a array right so single means cell cells connect uh, modules will be consist of cells and whereas arrays will be consist of modules right and here will be examples so there will be possible usage of solar photovoltaic uh, power generation that may be used in the agriculture I here will be I listed out many. Uh, the conclusion will be here will be uh, whenever your electricity operated equipment available in the agriculture applications. So there will be possibilities for solar photovoltaic systems uh, that will be supporting because that be producing electricity. Electricity you can use it. I listed out 16 numbers. Among them, uh, the more uh, popular will be solar fencing and uh, insect trapping system and water pumping system. So these three will be more commercialized right now. So this is the example of solar photovoltaic, uh, sorry, solar insect trap. So earlier the people are using only light uh, insect trap, the electricity operated, battery operated. So now they have inbuilt system. There is no maintenance record. So whenever you are keeping the material in the outside, automatically it be get charged by converting sunlight into electricity that will be stored in the battery. That battery have the timer and arrangement for your light operations during night time. So automatically on. And it'll be try it'll be collecting the or trapping the or insects. So light source as a trapping system, right? Attractive source for the or uh, insect during the night times, right? So this is a case simplest example. It'll be uh, commercialized and different models are available in the market. And next will be uh, solar powered sprayer. Uh, already we may be seen that uh, battery operated uh, sprayers are available, uh, in which you can attach your solar panels just a solar panel and it will be producing the electricity that may be stored in the battery and again the battery will be used to operate the pump to uh, pr to produce the pressurized liquid that may be sent to the RVs, right so that's a case and next one will be water pumping systems and here also the the pump already pump available uh, they may be used with diesel engine or electrical powers so that may be replaced with the solar panels and depending upon their uh, requirements uh, availability of our HP uh, of our pumps and you can choose the your, uh, size of the panels that is our array maybe you can choose it and finally your solar fencing so here will be they have the solar panel that will be generated the electricity that may be stored in the battery the battery will be power will be supplied to the sent to this energizer right so the energizer role will be producing high voltage so around 8000 8, uh, volt will be generated and uh, milliamps will be generated and that will be sent to in the fencing wires in the milliseconds, right? So it'll be milliseconds only be sending it. So whenever animal or any intruder will be come and contact with your fencing wire, it will get shocked. So after that, it will get scared. It don't come and contact with the fencing line again. So this is also commercially available technology from the solar uh, part. And these are the things will be in future. Uh, as I already said in the farm missionary people uh, and uh, the manpower will be more shortage right now whether technology automatic robotic technology will be available for agriculture means yes it's available so it's under only research stage so they have arrangement so in which we can see that solar panel will be fixed in the top and it will be producing the electricity that will be sent to the battery and power will be sent to the motor you can operate like that so uh, it will be GPS uh, connected so you can load the GPS information to the systems. So automatically be moving in the track, right? Another thing will be they have a more um, what you can say this camera. Camera will be there. It will capture the uh, uh, image of your um, uh, plant, right? And also you have the stored data. So apart from that, your main crop, any crops will be found, come and found by the your camera. So immediately it will be processed. Then it will be uh, doses. It will be chemicals. It will be micro dose will be sprayed on the particular uh, plant apart from their main plant 
and get uh, the bidding will be takes place right and this is a case another one be a group robot will be used for both uh, uh, fetication and ceilings so this is a case so all the things will be available uh, these two will be available in the research stage and solar powered tractors also right now will be getting booming now and people are asking for solar powered tractors and whenever the capacity will be increases the, the, your tray size your uh, modular size sir that is your array size also get increased so in order to overcome these issues you can keep the your array in the separate uh, permanent setup in the field on end of the field so you can go and charge it uh, by uh, daily measurement daily usage based upon the daily usage so nowadays the how to charging is will be easy right now because of the electrical vehicle be comes out so that's the way you can use it so this kind of tractor also so that's all about uh, my presentations if you have any queries please let me know So if there is no queries, uh, I will hand over the session to organizer. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful lecture on uh, uh, solar energy and other uh, uh, related uh, information. Thank you, sir. Now I request Dr. Raja Professor uh, from the Department of uh, Seed Science and Technology, TNAU Coimbatore, uh, to handle the session on uh, seed and related uh, information. Thank you, sir. Good evening to all. So today I would like to present uh, uh, a lecture on seed quality enhancement. So of course, uh, uh, this is a very important uh, topic. So, so particularly, uh, so if you take any input, so seed is uh, the uh, important uh, input. So normally, if any issue comes, again, uh, because of mostly the quality of the seed. So here, uh, seed means, of course, uh, uh, it is very important that the seed should have high quality. So that is very, very important. So here, the seed quality, again, uh, decided uh, by many factors. So of course, the genetic factor, so that is very, very important. So particularly, for example, uh, the storability so, uh, is concerned. So normally, we classify the seeds into three. Uh, so that is... Uh, um, macrobiotic, mesobiotic, and uh, microbiotic. So that is uh, actually we call it as the genetic. So, for example, sometimes the uh, microbiotic means like the oil seeds. So here uh, the, we cannot uh, store the seed for a long time. So that is, uh, of course, it is uh, actually called the genetic potential of that particular crop or maybe the variety. Even uh, sometimes within the variety, within the sorry, within the crop. Uh, we may come across with uh, some varieties uh, having uh, uh, poor uh, storability. So that is again uh, because of uh, the uh, genetic uh, potential of that particular variety. So this is a major uh, factor. It is it's the quality of the seed. Then uh, the second one is uh, the uh, physical appearance. So that again indicates. So that again indicates the quality of the seed. Of course, normally, uh, wherever uh, we are selling the seed or maybe uh, wherever we are purchasing the seed or maybe whoever may be the uh, person who are uh, purchasing the seed. So normally, they see the physical appearance first. So it uh, should be um, bright and uh, sound enough uh, to produce the uh, seedling and also should not uh, chaffy or anything. So for that only, normally, we go with... Uh, uh, processing operations to uh, elevate or upgrade the 
physical appearance of the seed so here this is a very important aspect particularly sometimes sometimes even if any uh, problem comes in the field so that is before harvest uh, in the field uh, maybe sudden rain or continuous rain like that then uh, again uh, the quality of the seed get uh, decreased so ultimately uh, if you see the called uh, happy appearance of the seed so maybe it may be the dull one or maybe discolored one uh, or maybe uh, half colored so like that uh, so many issues comes then uh, the another important aspect is the physiological uh, potential of the seed of course uh, this is very very important so uh, if i uh, any seed so we are talking on that so definitely it should be a viable one so for example uh, farmers uh, uh, if uh, they are sowing the seed in the field so definitely they should uh, able to get the maximum population then only uh, maximum emergence then only they can able to maintain the maximum population in the field so this is a very very important so mostly uh, if seed is concerned so the problem comes in this aspect only so that is the viability or maybe the non germinability in the field so like that the problem comes so here uh, of course the viability means you know uh, all very well about uh, that so it's nothing but the ability of the seed to germinate so that is it's nothing but molikuttaran so that is uh, if the seed can able to germinate under a favorable situation comes so that is actually called the viability but again we have uh, another uh, important physiological aspect so normally uh, we should consider this also so that is uh, the vigor status of the seed this is also very very important uh, criteria so for example vigor means is nothing but the physiological stamina so uh, of course uh, the previous one is a physical stamina so that is a physical appearance but here physiological stamina physiological stamina means is nothing but the uh, ability of the seed to put forth its seedlings under even uh, the unfavorable situation comes so that is uh, the uh, physiological stamina of the seed so this is also uh, and very important uh, factor so we should consider uh, normally in uh, most of the cases so first the seed lose its vigor first so the, that is a graph uh, here it shows so normally uh, if you take any seed so the vigor uh, goes down first then uh, later the viability goes so this is the strategy sometimes uh, even we can say so all viable seeds we cannot say uh, vigorous one but all vigorous seeds are called the viable seeds so this is the term uh, normally we call it as uh, the physiological stamina of the seed then uh, the another important aspect is the health status of the seed so this is also very very important health means both uh, pest and this is uh, incidence of the particular seed so for example if you take the pulses even paddy and all so normally while the storage we come across with a lot of uh, Uh, storage pest population so problems so like that even uh, suppose if any crop uh, of course uh, get uh, infected uh, during field or maybe uh, during storage by means of any uh, disease causing organism again that will also spoil the uh, store uh, storage of the seed uh, and ultimately reflex on the quality or maybe the emergence in the field so considering uh, a seed so these are all actually called the uh, very important factors so that uh, decides the uh, quality of the seed here uh, normally if you see so the stages so of course uh, from sowing uh, to harvest so this is of course actually called the pre harvest factors of course uh, otherwise uh, even we can say the agronomic management practices so and also uh, even sometimes the environmental factors also influence the uh, crop and again the quality of the seed then from harvest to storage so harvest to storage is nothing but the post harvest operations here again we have to do the necessary post harvest operations so particularly drying so that is very very important so we have to dry the seed more uh, uh, suitable for storage uh, maybe 8% to 10% so that it depends upon the crop that is a very very important one then uh, the processing operations so for example while processing uh, Uh, will be eliminating all the unwanted materials from the seed so by that way uh, of course uh, we can uh, avoid the uh, maybe pest or maybe disease causing uh, problems uh, in case of this uh, uh, unprocessed material and uh, if uh, processed material means so we can avoid these problems then another thing is the uh, third stage so that is the uh, storage to uh, sowing so here uh, our uh, case comes so that is uh, 
normally now uh, we uh, will be doing many uh, pre sowing seed treatments pre sowing seed treatments or even sometimes some mid storage treatments or maybe sometimes even pre storage treatments so this are all of course actually called the seed quality enhancement uh, treatments so it's nothing but to do, of course uh, normally the quality uh, of the seed will be decided in two stages one is uh, the uh, first case so that is uh, the uh pre harvest and post harvest so there is one thing then once the harvest is over and the seeds are processed then from storage until sowing again uh, we have to uh, take a, uh, take utmost care and to maintain the quality of the seed so in that case uh, this is the stage normally we can uh, uh, impose any type of treatments uh, maybe for better storability of the seed or maybe better emergence of the seed, uh, seedlings in the field then uh, Uh, what are the needs so for the seed treatment so of course normally if uh, we are giving any uh, seed treatment uh, means so the first and foremost important aspect is the to improve the quality of the seed so that is uh, the first criteria uh, normally uh, even we can say uh, seed is a carrier carrier of all technologies so for example Uh, if we want to add a herbicide so of course nowadays uh, we have uh, herbicide uh, i mean tolerant uh, uh, strains also so in that case even uh, we can uh, add a herbicide on the seed so in that case we can avoid the uh, weed population in the uh, field then uh, likewise again uh, if we want to avoid maybe the pest population in uh, maybe uh, during early stage of uh, seedling uh, establishment or maybe the disease instances so again uh, we can uh, add this uh, seed with uh, pesticide or maybe the fungicide so like that again if we want to add uh, the fertilizer to the field again we can uh, uh, introduce the uh, seed with uh, some nutrients or maybe we can add the uh, seed on the surface by means of uh, pelleting so like that we can uh, deliver so it is nothing but the uh, delivering the inputs Uh, delivering uh, the essential materials through seed so that is uh, actually normally we can say so the uh, carrier carrier of almost all the technologies to the field so this is of course a very important aspect then uh, and another important thing is the to improve the uh, field performance of course uh, most of the pre sowing seed treatments are given uh, particularly to, uh, to increase the field performance of the uh field performance of the particular variety or maybe the crop then on the another case is the during storability of course uh, some uh, problematic seeds of course uh, we all know that the pulses are maybe paid uh, and all uh, we may come across with the problems like broke seeds or maybe storage ma rice moth and all so again uh, to avoid the pest population so again we can go with some uh, uh, treatments or maybe the control measures uh, to avoid the pest or maybe disease then uh, the third again important aspect is uh, uh, for mechanized sowing of course uh, we all know that uh, today the labor labor shortage is the very uh, common problem anywhere so that is the major issue so and also farmers mostly the farmers are also facing the same problem and uh, to minimize uh, to minimize the uh, labor force and also to quicken the process for example sowing operation again normally we go with the uh, farm mechanization or like maybe uh, sowing by means of machines or maybe weeding by machine even uh, spraying nowadays even we have uh, the drones for spraying and all so like that we have the advanced techniques so in that case uh, for example if we want to uh, do the uh, sowing operation by means of uh, seed drill or maybe machine so again uh, we can uh, uh, have some uh, techniques for uh, enabling the seed for mechanized sowing so that is the technology particularly here the pelleting so pelleting or the design as it uh, whatever the case uh, normally we can say for mechanized sowing so here uh, the main advantage of mechanized sowing is nothing but uh, we can place the seed at uh, required place so that is the one case then of course uh, the uh, time of operation so even uh, within uh, uh, one hour or maybe short period so we can uh, Uh, complete our sowing operation so that is another important thing then again we can uh, reduce the uh, seed rate also so for example if you take the sesame example so normally uh, uh, our recommendation is about uh, 3 kg so again normally uh, after uh, 10 or uh, 15 days 
of uh, sewing again we have to do another important operation uh, so that is uh, actually thinning so unless uh, it is very difficult so to maintain the population so the uh, crowd uh, population crowd will be more so for that again uh, we have to do the uh, thinning operation properly so suppose if you are going uh, uh, with the mechanized sewing means so or maybe the uh, pelleting technology by machine sewing so definitely we can avoid this uh, operation so by placing uh, the seed in a uh, proper place so we can able to maintain the uh, row to row and also the plant to plant spacing so that is also possible by means of the mechanized uh, sewing uh, that is again possible only uh, uh, through the uh, pelletizing technique so this is one example like uh, sesam likewise even uh, nowadays even uh, we have uh, standardized uh, some protocols for uh, minor millets also so of course minor millets so we can uh, reduce the seed rate almost half of the quantity so that is also possible by means of uh, this uh, type of uh, technologies then uh, the prevention of uh, the uh, pre uh, in, uh, uh, this is infections so mainly uh, it's nothing but a pre storage c treatment pre storage c treatment so to avoid uh, disease infection in case of uh, the storage and also uh, to avoid pest population so that is also possible if suppose we are going uh, with pre sowing treatment then definitely we can able to avoid uh, the uh, pest population uh, during early stage of uh, seedling growth so that is also possible uh, by means of uh, the seed treatment then uh, again we can reduce the uh, use of uh, pesticide also so for example uh, here we can quote the uh, example uh, like cotton so mostly uh, what we are getting the seed in the market so private people or maybe the uh, government sector so mostly they treat the seed with uh, some uh, pesticide so of course uh, whatever the seed we are getting in the market almost all the seeds uh, particularly if you take a talk about the cotton so definitely treated with some uh, in, uh, insecticide immediate here mostly they use the immediate chlorophyll just to, to avoid the sucking pest population during early stage so in the, by that way we can avoid uh, maybe one spray or maybe two sprays at early stage of uh, crop growth so that is again uh, another uh, way so in that case again our uh, uh, simple seed treatment so that it helps to uh, helps the farmers uh, to avoid the uh, number of sprays then uh, of course uh, another important uh, thing is already i have mentioned so that is uh, the carry of all these uh, technologies then if you uh, uh, take about the stages of a seed treatment of course normally uh, we have uh, three stages so one is the pre sowing seed treatment so pre sowing seed treatments means it's nothing but uh, the seeds are treated before sowing of seeds in the field so that is actually called the pre sowing seed treatment here uh, of course i have uh, listed out uh, many uh, uh, treatments starting with uh, seed fortification infusion priming fluid drying and uh, all so here of course uh, just i want to emphasize uh, some of the important uh, treatments like the seed priming so nowadays mostly uh, the seed priming concept uh, is uh, uh, talking everywhere and also the uh, pre germination technique so that is also we can follow some uh, some important crops not for all the crops and again the last some three or four uh, uh, points so that is uh, the seed coating so as already i indicated so normally if you are uh, purchasing the seed in the market so mostly uh, you may come across uh, any one of these uh, technology so there is a seed coating or maybe film coating or maybe otherwise uh, even uh, we can say the polymer coating so that is coating of seed with uh, some polymer material and coloring of course uh, uh, even uh, nowadays uh, we cannot say uh, see the actual color of the seed particularly in case of maize cotton and then vegetable crop seeds and all so it's nothing but uh, the uh, seed coloring with maybe the polymers and along with that again they add some insecticide and fungicide to protect the seed or maybe the seedling so that is the technology we have then the last one is of course the pelleting uh, technology so this is also emerging uh, field so mostly uh, this uh, pelleting technique is nothing but to, uh, uh, just to uh, uh, sow the seed by machine so that is a very simple one and also to reduce the uh, seed rate so of course this are all actually called the pre sowing seed treatments then I, again uh, the second one is actually called the pre storage seed treatment pre storage means it's nothing but uh, 
uh, after processing uh, is over then the seeds are treated with uh, some uh, uh, chemicals or maybe some uh, other materials uh, just to, to protect the seed during storage period so that is the aspect so here of course normally and the third aspect that is uh, the seed sanitation so that is uh, mostly we are concentrating so that is uh, the treating the seed with either maybe the fungicide or uh, insecticide just to, to protect the seed uh, or uh, keep the seed away from uh, the pest and uh, disease population so that is uh, the uh, routinely uh, we are following uh, then of course the third important aspect is the uh, mid storage seed treatment of course this is uh, uh, nothing but mid storage uh, even we can say uh, in another way so mid storage correction treatment so otherwise called mid storage correction treatment is nothing but uh, after storage of seed so normally what will happen in the seed so of course the because of the uh, uh, free radical so that is a uh, lipid peroxidation process and uh, free radicals uh, process so the toxic materials get accumulated in the seed so again uh, that will again uh, so, uh, quicken the uh, seed deterioration process so in the case uh, during midway of storage so the seeds will be uh, given with any kind of any one of these type of treatment so that it depends upon the species uh, just to leach out the uh, accumulated toxic materials from the seed uh, so of course this kind of say treatments normally uh, we are not following but uh, some uh, foreign countries mostly they are following this storage correction treatment so here uh, just here i want to emphasize some important uh, uh, seed treatments uh, so, starting with the pre sowing, then followed with the pre uh, storage aspects. Here, if you see the first one, so that is uh, called the seed fortification treatment. So, this is again one of the important pre sowing seed treatment. So, for example, uh, while purchasing our uh, uh, boost or bone vita or anything, any uh, nutritive material, so just you can see uh, the on that contain container. So, mostly this uh, uh, material is fortified with uh, fortified with the so mostly they uh, use that word so fortified with means nothing but enriched with enriched with nutrients vitamins or maybe minerals like that and they normally they use uh, that word so here also we are uh, using the same concept so it's nothing but the seeds are here it's nothing but the we are fortifying the seed fortifying means it's nothing but we are introducing the seed with some uh, bioactive chemicals so that is the concept uh, just to, to increase the vigor of the seed so uh, vigor of the seed and also the further uh, uh, sealing vigor so here uh, the methodology is nothing but simple so uh, we have to soak the seed in any uh, any of the uh, recommended uh, chemical chemical solution so that is uh, very important again the duration of soaking again varies with the crop species so for example uh, for paddy means of course normally uh, we can go up to 24 hours so for example if uh, pulses means so the maximum uh, soaking duration is about uh, three hours only so that again we have to uh, take and care uh, then another important uh, aspect is the soaking volume also so suppose most of the cases normally uh, we recommend equal volume so for example that is a weight by volume so for example if you are using one kg of seed means so we can use one liter of uh, that solution so that is actually called equal volume but in sometimes like uh, the soaking injury uh, problem uh, seeds like uh, pulses uh, black gram green gram or copia and all so there the soaking injury is the major problem problem so if you uh, if you use the equal volume so there is a workload at the two workload of soap on so maybe within one hour two hours the seed will absorb the water very rapidly so and even another second hour or maybe third hour the seed coat get damaged so that is broken off so that is the problem so in that case again we have to reduce the volume of the solution so just to we are uh, introducing uh, lesser volume to that particular uh, seed so in that case again we can go with one third volume of the solution so that is very very important uh, then uh, once the soaking uh, of a seed so in a particular solution is over then uh, uh, we can surface dry the seed and directly we can go for uh, sowing in the field 
So here uh, uh, we have uh, standardized uh, this uh, uh, fortification treatment for many crops. So for example, more, for mostly uh, the uh, potassium digitrogen orthophosphate. So that is uh, uh, the chemical recommended for most of the crops and also the potassium chloride. So that is a very commonly used one. And particularly in case of pulses, so the zinc sulfate, then uh, uh, manganese sulfate, so can be used. Uh, Likewise, again, we have uh, some other chemicals. So, so even we can introduce uh, vitamins also. So for example, if you want to introduce uh, the vitamins like uh, antioxidants uh, into the seed, again, we can uh, uh, give to the seed. So likewise, even we have the botanicals also. Then uh, the second uh, concept is uh, actually called the seed infusion. So this is almost like the previous case. So that is, is nothing but the method of uh, seed fortification only. But uh, while... Uh, uh, dissolving the chemical in the water. So in case of uh, fortification, so here uh, normally uh, we have to dissolve the uh, chemical in solvents, organic solvents. So that is the difference. So whatever the chemical uh, we want to introduce into the seed, so it has to be dissolved in organic solvents. Then in, from in that solution, again, we have to uh, soak the uh, seed, maybe for uh, required time. So the advantage over uh, uh, seed fortification is, so as already pointed out, no, so some seeds, some seeds may have the soaking injury problem. So in that case, uh, the seed will absorb uh, more uh, water. So here, if you use the solvents, then uh, the soaking injury problem will not come. So that is one thing. Then uh, drying back. So in case of fortification, again, you have to dry. So even uh, at least you have to wait for some time for surface drying. But here, so immediately after uh, the soaking hour is over, then within a short period of time, the solvents get uh, evaporated. So that is uh, the another advantage. Then another important aspect is, uh, while using the solvent, the solvent will carry the nutrients. So uh, whatever the chemical we want to introduce into the seed, so that will be carried to the cellular level. So cellular level. So that is also the another advantage in case of the seed infusion. Then another technology we have is fluid drilling or otherwise called gel seeding. Of course, this technology we can combine with free germination technique also. So here normally the seeds are pre-germinated. So of course, the next one or two slides, just I'm going to tell you about the free germination technique. So if the seeds are pre-germinated, of course, uh, uh, there may be a chance of getting uh, damage to the uh, protrude radical. So in that case, if those seeds are uh, coated with uh, viscous gel, so we can avoid the uh, damage to the growing axis. So that is actually called the concept of fluid drilling. Of course, uh, and this uh, gel axis is a cushioning uh, agent, cushioning agent, and it helps to... Uh, avoid uh, the damage to the uh, emerging radical. So this is the concept, of course, mostly followed in uh, uh, foreign countries and also the dry permeation. This is also another technology we have. This is almost like the uh, seed infusion. So there is organic solvents are used to carry the material. Then, uh, of course, uh, this is the latest uh, technology. Of course, many people, uh, even uh, particularly the vegetable uh, Workers, they are normally they follow this type of uh, seed treatments. So here, the, it is a very simple technique. Of course, even after telling uh, maybe another one or two slides, so <laughs> you know about this technology. So here, uh, the concept is, so the controlled hydration of the seed. So it's nothing but just we are increasing the moisture content of the seed. Uh, and uh, by that way, we are activating, activating the germination process, germination process. Then after the, uh, normally in case of uh, the seed germination, so we can uh, classify into our uh, uh, three phases or three stages. So that is a phase one, phase two and phase three. So phase one means it's nothing but the imbibition stage. So normally the seed will start absorbing the moisture. So that is the first stage. Then once the moisture get uh, absorbed by the seed, so automatically the enzyme activity get uh, initiated in the seed. So again, uh, that uh, enzyme activation uh, is there, then automatically the growth hormones will be generated or maybe synthesized in the seed. 
then uh, this is of course uh, actually called the phase 2 then uh, the third one is actually called the cell elongation and the emergence of the uh, our uh, radical part so here normally what we are doing in uh, this uh, priming technology so just we are soaking the seed in the uh, water mere water so even that is enough or otherwise in any kind of solution uh, just to complete the seed uh, in uh, germination stage or otherwise phase 1 and also phase 2 but not beyond that so before that we have to stop that uh, process and we can uh, go for uh, drying the seed then uh, suppose if you use this this is actually called the priming technology or primed seed then if you use this primed seed for sowing then the seed will continue so of course it will continue uh, already the seed completed the phase one and phase two uh, stages so uh, normally what will happen the seed will continue from the uh, maybe phase two or maybe from the phase three onwards for uh, its emergence in that case so we can minimize the number of days of, of emergence and also so sometimes for example the very uh, in the field condition the water or maybe the moisture is very less so the before uh, the drying of that uh, lesser moisture so the seed will emerge uh, or ceiling will emerge out from the seed seed so that is the actually concept called uh, seed priming of course here we have a number of uh, uh, or maybe types for example ospo priming means mostly the osmotics like the polyethylene glycol or maybe the mannitol are used. So here uh, mannitol of course is somewhat costlier chemical. So normally we are not recommending one. But a polyethylene glycol can be used. But uh, in case of uh, this osmo prim osmotic priming or osmo priming mostly uh, used to, uh, for uh, the vegetable crops like uh, the uh, tomato, chili, brinjal and all. Again, uh, the foreign people are mostly they recommend this uh, technology. Of course, the second one, so that is actually hydro priming. So this is the technology we are following. Of course, uh, uh, you know very well in uh, paddy. So of course, the paddy is mostly before sowing. So direct on the dry seed. So normally, uh, we go for soaking in uh, uh, at least uh, overnight. And again, uh, next day, uh, we are uh, keeping the seed for incubation. So that is uh, for uh, emergence of uh, or protection of radical. Then only we are going for sowing in the field. So this is actually called the uh, hydropriming technique. So, of course, uh, uh, unknowingly, knowingly or unknowingly, our forefathers are using this uh, hydropriming technique from a very long period onwards. But uh, this is a very simple technique. So, it's nothing but soaking of seed uh, in the water. So, that is actually called hydropriming. Then, uh, uh, instead, we can uh, follow some uh, halopriming technology. Although halo means it's nothing but chemical compounds. So, instead of water, so we can use uh, some uh, potassium nitrate or sodium chloride and magnesium sulfate or maybe the potassium dihydrogen orthophosphate, but whatever the chemical just to we want to introduce into the seed uh, means so we can add in that uh, water uh, or uh, we can introduce into the seed so that is actually called the halo priming it is nothing but almost like hydro priming but instead so we here we are sublimating the seed with some nutrients so like a potassium or maybe sulfate or whatever the calcium so whatever the content we want to add into the seed then uh, likewise we have the solid matrix priming so of course here the solid matrix priming means it's nothing but the seeds are uh, mixed with some solid uh, organic material organic uh, that is uh, in a inert material uh, for slow absorption so particularly these uh, seeds having the soaking injury and all so we can go with this uh, methodology then the another one is, of course, this is also uh, mostly the farmers are following and also we are recommending. So that is actually called the bio priming. So this is the concept. So mostly nowadays we are talking about in that. So here, uh, instead of uh, hydro priming, so that is a soaking uh, of a seed mere water. So even in that water, we can add some uh, uh, bio inoculants. So or maybe bio control agents. So that is the concept called the bio priming. So, for example, farmers want the water on the soak pantranga of dinner. So, even we can uh, advise them uh, to add that uh, in that water with uh, maybe the uh, other uh, bio inoculants like osospelum, bosphobacteria, osostropica, whatever the uh, uh, agents we want to uh, introduce in that. Or otherwise, even nowadays we have some bio control agents also. So, trichoderma and all. Even uh, we have the liquid formulations. So, that liquid formulation can also be added in that water. 
and we can uh, do the bioprimming operation so this is of course the another concept uh, so this is the flow diagram of the uh, seed priming so here uh, the dry seeds dry seeds are hydrated hydrated maybe with uh, water or maybe with any other uh, type of a solution and again after the certain period or maybe the recommended period is over then again uh, the seeds will be first shade dried and again followed by uh, will be sun dried uh, to bring back the original moisture content so that is very very important then if we want to store the primed seed again of course we can uh, store it for short time not for long time so we can store it for short time and again uh, we can go for sowing in the field so of course the uh, Based on this, we have some of the standard chemicals, uh, standardized chemicals for some of the crops like the zinc sulfate can be used for uh, pulses, particularly black gram. So we can use this chemical and the potassium chloride. So like the sunflower cotton and all uh, we can use. Uh, then uh, likewise, again, nowadays, again, we have another concept called the magnetic seed treatment. So here, uh, just we are ex exposing the seed so to the magnetic field so magnetic the magnetic pulse field la vandha nama seed expose panumbodhu so automatically the enzymes that are present in the uh, seed get activated so that is the first concept and another one is sometimes uh, because of this uh, pulse uh, uh, magnetic field even uh, the surface bound uh, pathogens uh, can also be uh, eliminated removed so are killed otherwise even we can say so that is uh, the concept uh, called magnetic seed treatment of course uh, many works are uh, being carried out in this uh, aspect then uh, this is uh, as i already indicated the pre-germination technique so particularly this concept is uh, followed for uh, some important crops so like paddy groundnut and goats of course uh, paddy so normally the farmers are uh, uh, aware about this technology and again they are following so pre-germination technique so normally they go for a soaking and incubation followed by uh, sowing so this is the concept in uh, pre-germination technique and of course in uh, groundnut so uh, again we can follow this uh, pre-germination technique so the thing is uh, the radical sh uh, uh, should emerge out so that is the stage so it should not come out of the seed coat so that the radical one the protrusion theory now but it should not come out of the seed coat so that the stage we have to uh, collect the germinated seed alone and we can go for sowing in the field so that is uh, this is one thing then of course in goats normally in goats uh, normally uh, what the farmers will do of course uh, per hill normally they go for uh, sowing five seeds so or anj seed vandu or or edathla sowing eduthittu then uh, the, after the germination uh, is over so again they thin out some two, uh, two or three seedlings so that is the concept uh, they follow otherwise uh, normally uh, what they do so continuously maybe every uh, two feet they sow the seed then after the emergence of uh, sealing, so again they go for thinning. So likewise, they are normally they follow instead. So here uh, we can use this uh, pre-germination technique. So here again like a paddy, so we have to soak the seed in the uh, water uh, overnight and again we can go for incubating uh, by using the kani bag or maybe cloth bag. So uh, in that case, uh, maybe another next day, the seed will... Uh, put forth its ceiling so that is a, you can observe a mild crack on the seed coat so that is on the radical point so those seeds alone can be removed uh, can be collected and can be used for sowing in that case so instead of using uh, maybe the five seeds per place that is a per kill even we can restrict maybe one seed if we want or otherwise uh, particularly in case of pandal and a type pandal normally we advocate three uh, per kill so in that case uh, directly the, to those three seeds alone can be so on. So definitely we can get 100% establishment in the field. So this is the advantage of the pre-germination technique. Of course, we can recommend to the farmers. And of course, apart from this, we have the biofertilizer treatments. Of course, this is we are recommending to the farmers and also they are following this technology. Uh, of course, uh, the carrier-based material or maybe the liquid-based materials we can uh, 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 use uh, for seed treatment. And uh, apart from that, again, the biocontrol bio agents like Bacillus, Subtilis, or Trichoderma, again, uh, the carrier-based material or maybe the liquid-based material can be used. 
then uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, concept called the seed coating so of course uh, uh, mostly uh, now we are getting uh, seeds in the market so particularly some uh, uh, aluminum foil pouches or maybe colored packs so most of the cases most of the cases so particularly the low volume seeds uh, low volume seeds and sometimes even uh, like high volume seeds so even uh, even uh, pl millet or maybe the maize and all so again uh, this technology is being followed so it's nothing but coating uh, of a seed with some polymers polymers or maybe the coloring agents so here uh, just we are uh, coating the seed with the coloring agents uh, we are not uh, altering the uh, we are not altering the uh, size and the shape of the seed so that is uh, actually called seed coating so here mostly the uh, polymers mostly the polymers with uh, different colors for example uh, normally for paddy we can use yellow polymer so likewise uh, black gram means again uh, the uh, black color polymer is available that can be used then uh, even uh, sunflower again a uh, red polymer is there so likewise a uh, different color uh, colors are there so here you can see uh, different uh, variations uh, variegated colors for seed treatment so likewise uh, we can use and uh, colorfully we can supply uh, seeds to the farmers so in addition to that in addition to that so while uh, adding colors to the seed so or maybe uh, coating the seed with the polymers so we can supplement uh, that uh, polymer with uh, fungicide or maybe insecticide here the advantage of using this polymer is so instead of uh, suppose if you are going with uh, the uh, water or maybe other substance so it uh, we have to dry the seed for some time but uh, here uh, mostly the company people uh, so this is a uh, added advantage to the company people also so uh, now if uh, we are using or maybe the company people are using the polymer so within uh, some uh, 10 seconds or 15 seconds so the seed surface get dried off so that is so uh, that is the advantage of using the polymer so and also the material that we want to add uh, on the seed also get uh, sticked on the um, seed surface so for example if you are using uh, dust formulation for seed treatment so definitely it will not stick on the seed so for that normally we advocate the celery type so for that so we have to add some uh, little water maybe some one or two ml water and we have to make that uh, chemical into a celery formulation so then that material will be uh, coated on the seed so that is the system called normally we are following the celery treatment instead suppose uh, if you are using this polymer polymer as a carrier or maybe the coating agent so within a short period of time uh, so it will uh, dry and get dried out and also the materials that we want to add on the seed like fungicide or maybe insecticide will stick on the surface of the seed so in that way uh, the material will be carried over until uh, the seeds are sown in the field even after sowing so that uh, material will be uh, there in the field so and will uh, help uh, the sealing for uh, maybe uh, against uh, uh, disease or maybe the pest so that is uh, the advantage of using this polymer mostly so even uh, the uh, seed testing people or uh, the uh, persons working in offices working in seed technology lab so mostly they are aware about this uh, type of uh, seeds so mostly nowadays i think uh, nearly about uh, some 80 some 90 percent of the samples are uh, they are receiving uh, like this only so that is uh, particularly in case of vegetables and even uh, like uh, the some uh, important uh, hybrids so uh, the company people of course uh, they are uh, treating the seeds uh, with uh, polymer and adding with uh, some fungicides or maybe the insecticide so this is the concept then along with that uh, uh, again we can add some other uh, electrolytes also for example that is actually called the hydrophilic coating so here uh, this uh, in, in this case this hydroplate coating material will absorb the water will absorb the moisture almost like uh, 100 to 1000 times uh, of their weight and it will slowly release the moisture to the growing ceiling so that is actually called the uh, hydrophilic coating then uh, likewise again uh, we have uh, another uh, uh, concept called hydrophobic coating so hydrophobic means 
suppose uh, if the seeds are sown under a submerged condition so submerged condition means then uh, the oxygen availability to the uh, uh, germinate uh, germinating ceiling will not be insufficient so in that case what will uh, do um, so this will help the seed for getting more oxygen so that is uh, actually called hydrophobic and also it restrict it restrict the water entry to the Uh, seed so that is one thing then uh, and another uh, one is uh, for example in case of hybrid seed production so hybrid seed production means usually uh, we have two parents one is the female parent another one is a male parent so here uh, even though uh, the crop is the same so like even maize or maybe rice whatever the case uh, while uh, doing breeding work Uh, or maybe the hybridization work or a selection of parents so normally the breeders will uh, choose the uh, equal duration parents only so even then so there may be chances of getting some uh, difference in the duration for example 100 days abina so both male and female parents should have the 100 days duration so but that uh, one it's very difficult we cannot get so some slight difference may be there between the uh, female and male parents so that the slight difference so normally uh, ca- comes as a problem during flowering so in case of hybrid seed production the flowering is a very important event so in both the parents the flowering should be in the same period so that is very very important particularly for example if we take uh, rice and all so the synchronization so synchronization uh, or the synchronized flowering synchronized flowering is very important so that is then only the transfer of pollen from male parent to female parent will be ideal so otherwise what will happen so non synchronization means so for example any one of the parent comes early like male parent vand early mature aichana then entire pollen gets get waste gets get wasted so in that case what will happen the female parent will not able to get the pollen grain so that is one thing then uh, suppose uh, if a female is maturing early so a female vandu adanude stigma it becomes receptive early abina then uh, that female parent uh, will not able to get sufficient pollen grains of in the uh, male parent if the male parent is uh, late maturing one so in that case again uh, we have to uh, have uh, some technologies like for synchronized flowering so for uh, of course we have some methods for uh, getting synchronized flowering of course some uh, agronomic management practices are also there for different crops so in addition to that so here suppose if you are using this type of coating like hydrophobic coating we are using means so here uh, this uh, coating material will allow the water uh, for in, uh, entry into the seed slowly so that means so the absorption of water by that early maturing parent will be very slow so in that case what will happen so the late maturing parent will emerge out early and it becomes uh, some 2 3 days advance advance so then uh, the early maturing comes uh, again late so in that case uh, at the time of flowering so we can somewhat we can manage some 2 3 days difference so this is of course one uh, kind of a treatment called hydrophobic coating so again this is possible by means of adding some Uh, coating material on the seed so this is of course uh, already pointed out the high oxygen supplier coating so in case of submerged condition again we can uh, uh, use this type of material to supplement the seed with oxygen so of course these are all uh, some pictures uh, uh, showing on the uh, seed coating or maybe the film coating uh, with seed so here you can see the uh, polymer material that is being uh, sprayed on the seed in a very Uh, fine particles so in that case uh, so this is a rotating drum so in that rotating drum normally the polymer materials will be sprayed on the seed and automatically the seed entire surface uh, get coated so that is actually called the concept of uh, polymer coating and the another uh, aspect is the intelli coat so particularly in case of this is of course uh, uh, in future so this may also come uh, in our country also even uh, for european countries and western countries of course uh, they are following this technology so mostly they have a problem uh, in soil temperature so very low temperature sometimes uh, nowadays of course you know very well uh, so they have the temperature even uh, uh, zero and minus also so sometimes uh, 
uh, even uh, during uh, their cropping period also so the soil temperature again goes very less like even uh, 5 degrees celsius or maybe less than that so in that case uh, suppose uh, if the seeds are sown again uh, the, once it germinates uh, the lot of problems uh, comes to the uh, emerging uh, seedling so in that case normally what they do so normally the seeds are uh, coated with uh, uh, the intellicot material. So that is the technology. So they have developed. So uh, here this acts as a barrier. Suppose, uh, for example, here uh, the temperature is about 55 degree Fahrenheit. So 55 degree, like even we can say some 12 to 13 degrees Celsius. So on the temperature, that material will not uh, allow the water to enter into the seed. So in that case, what will happen automatically, the seed will not germinate. Suppose if the temperature, soil temperature goes above maybe 13 degree or 14 degree, then automatically this uh, seed coating material. So allow the water into the uh, seed, then automatically the seed will uh, start to germinate. So this is of course the concept called IntelliCoat. Of course, the uh, Western countries, so they are following this uh, technology. Then uh, another important uh, thing is the seed pelleting. So this is of course, again, uh, many of you uh, have noticed or maybe handled this material also. So that is a pelleting technology. This is the concept nowadays. So here pelleting technology is nothing but uh, 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 to increase the size of the seed. So by adding uh, some material or maybe the inert material on the surface of the seed. So that is the concept, particularly for singulation of the seed and uh, enabling the seed for mechanized sowing. So this is the concept normally followed. Here, um, uh, for example, even I can say uh, the an example like uh, the sugar beet. So normally in uh, beetroot and the sugar beet, uh, the seed actually we call it as multi-gem. So multi-gem seed of insulin. Mostly uh, or seed of dinner, it has a single embryo and a single gem only. But in case of beetroot and uh, 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 sugar beet and all. So uh, we can uh, get that uh, seed ball. So that is on the seed cluster of insulin. In that, uh, there are uh, two germs, two, sometimes even rarely three also. So in that case, suppose if you put one cluster or maybe one seed, so otherwise even uh, another terminology is that that is seed ball. So if you put that one seed, then uh, you will get uh, some two or maybe three ceilings from a single seed. So that is actually called the multi gem. So here mostly um, uh, what the industry people are doing, so they separate the uh, gems into a single one. So that is uh, suppose in a cluster two gems are there. So by using machine, they uh, separate these two gems into a, uh, a single one. Then they coat this material uh, by uh, inert materials or maybe other nutrient materials and they increase the size. So the size increase is mainly to cover the seed, to cover the seed and also to supplement the seed with some nutrient materials and also for uh, easy sowing. So these are all of course some of the advantages. So for example, here you can see the photographs. So the first one is the tomato seed. So the seed size is very small. So of course in tomato, so you know very well, so it has the hairs on the seed. So, it's very difficult to get the single seed. So, single seed, even sowing, so in that case, suppose if you are going with the seed pelleting, so definitely you can get the single seed. So, by that way, again, you can able to minimize the seed rate. Nowadays, of course, mostly the farmers are using hybrids. So, even a hybrid seed, they are uh, giving more amount for the purchase of a seed alone. So, for example, uh, some 5 gram seed or maybe 10 gram or maybe 50 gram seed. So, normally they will be cost about 5000 rupees or maybe uh, more than that. So, in that case, uh, each and every seed is a precise one. So, that is, uh, it's a valuable one. So, they should not waste even a single seed. So, in that case, we can, we can uh, go with this uh, seed pelleting technology. So, here, uh, the advantages of a pelleting, even we can say the precision planting. So that is already I pointed out the uh, plant to plant spacing. So we can uh, maintain and uh, we can reduce the thinning cost, particularly in case of uh, the crops like sesame and all. And uh, while uh, doing thinning uh, operation, so again, the nearby plants uh, plants will also be 
affected. So in that case, uh, that again, uh, shock will be there, those plants. So to avoid uh, those things, again, we can go for uh, pelleting. Then uh, along with that, Again, uh, while adding the inert material on the seed, so just for coating purpose, again, we can add the uh, nutrients or maybe the bio inoculants or whatever the component. So, or maybe input we want to deliver uh, to the field or maybe uh, to that particular crop. So, definitely we can uh, add to that particular seed by the way of the uh, coating. And then again, we can reduce the seed rate also. So that already I uh, indicated. Then again, we can protect the seed from maybe the pest or maybe the disease uh, by, by means of adding the uh, insecticides or maybe the chemical uh, uh, fungicides. Of course, here uh, you can see the first picture. This is actually called the uh, it's a very simple uh, sugar beet seed. So coated with the film coating material. Again, that seed again uh, separated and uh, we can uh, get the seeds uh, as a round one. So, that is uh, with a single gem. So, this is the concept called the um, uh, seed pelleting. So, here the protocol of uh, seed pelleting is nothing but first the seeds are coated with uh, some adhesive material. So, seed material first the seed should be uh, added with uh, some adhesive material. So, Uttum Dharamam. So, Mela Vandu Uttar Dhaka. Then again, uh, after adding uh, the adhesive material, then we can add with uh, that seed with the filler materials. So, uh, here any filler material or maybe inert, uh, otherwise called inert material, we can uh, add. Then along with that, again, we can uh, supplement that uh, inert or maybe filler material with uh, some nutrients like even vitamins or maybe uh, chemicals or maybe even uh, antioxidant compounds or even growth hormones, or even the fungicides or insecticide, herbicide, whatever the uh, technology we want to add uh, to that particular seed. So uh, we can coat it on the seed. Then the, this is actually called the uh, pelleted seed. So, so here, uh, there are two materials. So one is the pillar material and another one is the seed. So normally here, the for pelleting and all, the gum arabic. So that is the material normally used uh, by many, many of the uh, uh, companies and also the methyl cellulose that can also be used. Uh, of course, uh, the starch gruel and maida normally we are recommending the farmers for uh, biofertilizer treatment. So this is of course uh, for uh, immediate sowing, it's, uh, it is okay, but uh, so for uh, storage and all again, uh, this will create uh, the problem like uh, fungal infection and all because it is rich in uh, uh, nutrients. So better we can use the gum arabic or maybe methyl cellulose. Then the filler material, of course, uh, any inert material can be used. Uh, even uh, the limestone or maybe calcium carbonate. For most of the cases, the calcium carbonate. So that is the material normally uh, we advocate for pelleting. Here, uh, and the another important aspect is the uh, selection of uh, uh, pelleting material. So, like the filler and also the adhesives. So, uh, these two materials should not be toxic to the seed. So, that is very, very important. Suppose if it is a toxic means, then uh, emerging out, uh, that is uh, the germinating seed, again gets uh, affected by these uh, toxic substances so that are present in the uh, adhesive or maybe on, on the filler material. So, that is the problem. So, like that, we have to choose this uh, filler material. So, it should not be toxic to the seed. So, again, uh, uh, for uh, uh, filler med uh, uh, material, so we can use the botanical leaf powder. So, that is a dried leaf powder, so like Pungam or Nochi So, uh, any, any kind of uh, filler material can be used. So, this is a simple uh, flow diagram showing uh, the uh, polymer coating, coloring and pelleting. So, polymer coating means is nothing but the polymer is added on the seed. Along with it, that we can add some uh, active ingredients or maybe chemicals. So, that is a very simple technology. So, this coloring almost like uh, the polymer coating, but uh, instead, so the synthetic dyes or maybe the natural dyes can be used. So, that is actually called uh, the colored seed. So, nowadays, uh, mostly the uh, private companies, so what they are doing, they are accompanying these two. So, that is the colored polymer. Colored polymer are used, uh, colored polymers are used particularly uh, for coating the seed. Then, of course, the third one is pelleting. So, pelleting means it's nothing but increasing the size. 
but in case of polymer coating and coloring so we are not uh, altering the size the size and the shape every everything is same uh, only thing is just we are uh, adding some uh, color or maybe coating material on the side so the size will not be altered but in case of uh, the pelleting and all so the size get altered so the small size seed be, um, becomes a big one so that is actually the concept called uh, pelleting here of course for pelleting and all uh, we have the uh, pelletizer so that is actually called pellet mills or pelletizer and once the pelleting is over then again we have to dry the material because we are adding uh, the seed with the adhesive no so that again uh, should be dried so properly then only that pellet material get uh, uh, will stick on on the surface of the seed so uh, these are all some of the machines then uh, again in case of uh, uh, foreign countries uh, even for the problematic soils like the uh, acidic soil and all uh, they use the lime material so lime material for pelleting of the seed so in that case uh, here we can see the difference in pelleted and unpelleted pelleted means it's nothing but the seeds are coated with lime material so in that case the crop can able to uh, withstand the saline condition so that is even the acid condition so that is the concept so in that again uh, pelleting of course if the size is big one and also uh, if you are putting a particular uh, material in a particular place then it is not moving and uh, that is actually called the seed drop or otherwise even we can say the seed ball so like that we have different uh, uh, materials for pelleting of the seed here you can see the uh, vegetable crops so we have some uh, standardized procedures like brinjal tomato onion chili and all vegetable crops so we have standardized and another important thing is uh, the number of layers so we know that uh, by means of uh, adding adhesive so we can simply coat the seed on the uh, surface but uh, that is not the thing so how many layers we have to add so that is also very very important so for example uh, if the size of the seed so size of the seed we want to uh, increase or maybe the big one means so again uh, we have to increase the number of layers for that every time every time so we have to add first adhesive then uh, the inert material then adu vandu pelletizer vechi pellet pannano then again we have to uh, dry a short period then again we have to go for next layering so next that is again we have to add uh, second uh, layer of adhesive then uh, second layer of inert material likewise we have to repeat so we have to continuously repeat uh, the number of times that we want to uh, 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 add to that particular seed so here of course uh, for example brinjal tomato so 15 or 13 layers are enough so like that we have to increase the size then uh, again uh, uh, here just uh, we have compared the uh, control and pelleted seed so uh, of course uh, definitely the pelleted seed pelleted seed uh, the germination will be good one but the emergence emergence of course because we have uh, coated we have coated the seed with uh, pelleting material in that case well when compared with the control and uh, the uh, pelleted seed so the time of germination so otherwise even we can say the speed of germination it is uh, somewhat less in case of primary seed and pelleted seed so pelleted seed means uh, on the pelleting material na soak it then only the moisture enters into the seed then only it foot force its sealing so it takes uh, one or two days late so for its uh, germination so that is uh, actually uh, normally we can say in pelleted seed then uh, this is uh, the uh, pelleted seeds of uh, some uh, minor millets like tinai sami and kudiru velai and all so here you can see the seed size so uh, uh, get increased then uh, this is the crop strand in the uh, pelleted seed this is an experiment we have uh, we conducted uh, in our department by uh, using the uh, seed drill so that is a pneumatic seed drill so here uh, normally the seeds like uh, the millets minor millets like the uh, varagu we pelleted these uh, seeds with uh, pelleting material and uh, we have sown the seeds by uh, pneumatic seed drill so here the proper placement of the seed is very good in this uh, then uh, another uh, thing is uh, normally another question comes so whether uh, we can uh, store the pelleted seed for uh, 
how many uh, how many days or maybe how many years so months so mostly here uh, we have uh, a result so even after six months the pellet seed uh, uh, has good germination so uh, this is the concept mostly the private companies even pathinga uh, the sugar beet la nariya and department la namak vandu seed vandirukum so it's nothing but the demonstration purpose so those actually called the pelleted seed only so uh, again uh, by, uh, by means of uh, pelleting so the seed will not get uh, affected and we can store it for uh, uh, the number of months so there will not be any issue to the seed of course uh, these are all some of the advantages that i already discussed uh, here you can see the some of the machines normally used for uh, coloring and pelleting so these are all of course the automatic uh, machines normally used for coating of the seed then uh, again uh, we have the uh, machine uh, called the pellet sorter so pellet sorter means uh, for example uh, suppose uh, pelleting panumbodhu some seeds may be with high dense and some uh, pellets may be with low dense in that case based on the density that is a weight so the pellets are uh, uniformly uniformly graded so that is actually called the pellet sorter so this is of course based on size so here in this case we can able to get the uniform size pellets so that is the advantage of using this type of pellets pellet sorter then uh, this is about the pre sowing seed treatments of course uh, uh, many private companies uh, are uh, exploiting uh, these technologies and are being following uh, on commercial basis so apart from that of course we have some pre storage treatments of course uh, in that we have uh, different uh, methods like halogenation anti accident treatment seed sanitation fumigation and all so here normally this uh, sanitation and fumigation this is of course uh, this um, two methods are uh, being uh, followed uh, in uh, almost all the uh, seed storage goodons so for example uh, suppose the seeds one we want to store it for maybe next season means definitely we have to treat the seed with uh, fungicide or maybe with uh, insecticide so that is a seed protective treatment so that is uh, the technology called the sanitation and of course uh, the uh, fumigation so normally Uh, for example rice so without fumigation it is very difficult to uh, manage the uh, rice moth population in the godown so there is the uh, concept normally we follow in the uh, seed storage godown then apart from that uh, again uh, the third aspect is the mid storage treatment here i am not going uh, uh, deep into that so just uh, i want to emphasize uh, so what is uh, mean by mid storage treatment here mid storage hydration uh, mid storage treatment or otherwise actually called the hydration dehydration treatment hydration means is nothing but increasing the moisture then uh, dehydration means again reducing the moisture so that is actually called hydration and dehydration uh, that, that that means soaking the seed uh, in water or maybe in any solution for a uh, particular period and again drying back to the uh, original moisture so that is actually hydration and dehydration sir idu edhukku pannanum appadina so already for example so uh, already we stored the seed in the storage godown so because of uh, the physiological and biochemical reasons so like uh, uh, the lipid peroxidation process and free radical formation so the toxic material that already indicated no toxic material get accumulated in the seed that is at the cellular level so once the material accumulation started in the seed again uh, this will spoil the nearby cell also so again adanal enna agana automatically the seed starts deteriorating very fast so in that case suppose if we want to prolong the storage of that particular seed so or otherwise sometimes what will happen this toxic material accumulated in the seed will inhibit it or will affect the germination of the seed also so in that case suppose if we leach out this material means so automatically we can able to prolong the uh, storability of the seed so that is a uh, cell or cell rendu pakkathula irukra cell damage pandrathukku and the toxic material reason appadina suppose if you are uh, leaching out that uh, material so definitely we can avoid the uh, further uh, um, deterioration of that particular seed so this is of course the concept called hydration or dehydration treatment or otherwise called mid storage correction treatment so that is uh, while storing the seed we are correcting the seed for 
it's a better storage so that is actually called mid storage correction treatment here very simple thing so the seeds are hydrated or imbibed otherwise called imbibed or soaked in water or maybe any chemical solution so by that way so normally we are leaching out the material uh, toxic material accumulated in the seed so that is one thing then also the we are quenching the free radical protection so that is a free radical is a toxic material production so other one we are nullifying so these two are the uh, process normally we for we, we are uh, following while doing the uh, mid storage correction treatment then after maybe some 12 hours or 14 hours period uh, is over then the seeds will be dried back to the original moisture that is very very important and we can keep the seed in the storage good on until again we want to uh, use for next time so this is of course uh, the concept of particularly the private companies some uh, uh, companies uh, uh, they are doing this practice uh, normally suppose uh, what they do uh, they have some targeted quantity suppose if uh, they uh, could not able to uh, sell out the entire material so some excess uh, unsold material are there means so again that material will be uh, used for maybe the next season disposal so in that case so what they do so they do some mid storage correction while uh, 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 waiting for the next year or maybe the next season so like that they follow this type of uh, hydration and dehydration treatments so of course here we have some number of techniques like soaking drying dipping drying spraying drying moisture equilibration drying and moist standard conditioning and all here soaking drying means it's nothing but uh, soaking of seed in um, water in water or maybe any chemical solutions so like the uh, potassium uh, phosphate or sodium chloride potassium iodide like that we can use uh, the chemicals so here may, uh, the seeds may be soaked for about uh, uh six hours period so uh, while, while doing this uh, soaking uh, uh, process so automatically the materials that accumulated uh, get leached out into that so, uh, water or maybe the solution and again after that uh, soaking period is over we can dry the seed and we again we can keep it in the uh, godown for uh, further uh, season so of course this is a soaking drying so particularly we can use uh, for uh, almost uh, all crops but here in case of dipping drying and all so the we can follow this type of uh, techniques uh, like uh, the problematic seeds like the seeds having the soaking injury and all so in that case we can go with this type of uh, method like dipping means is nothing but a, uh, dipping of a seed for about 5 minutes in water and again uh, we have to incubate it for about uh, some of uh, 2 or 6 hours 2 to 6 hours so by that way uh, we are restricting the uh, level of water to the seed so by that way again we are uh, avoiding the soaking injury to that particular seed so this is of course uh, dipping drying so uh, likewise again we have spraying drying also so the seeds are uh, sprayed with the fine particles of the water and again uh, will be incubated for about uh, uh, 4 to 6 hours and again uh, that a seed will be dried back so this is of course uh, dipping drying and like that again the seeds will be uh, exposed to the uh, high relative humidity condition so like 100 uh, percent relative humidity condition normally the seeds will be exposed so by that way again uh, we are nullifying the free radical uh, formation so this is of course another methodology so like that uh, we have some other uh, method also so these are all about the different uh, kinds of uh, seed treatments available uh, for uh, its betterment of the um, betterment and also the establishment in the field. So that's all about the different uh, kinds of uh, uh, seed quality enhancement techniques. So if you have any doubt or any clarification.